Non-linear is giving us the flexibility and the enjoyment that we had in the film cutting room. I think for documentary makers who are looking at making 20, 30, 40, 50 minute films, the idea of having to cut them in a linear system is just a complete, no complete non-starter. I think non-linear editing is the future of post-production. I think at the moment we are in the absolute infancy of non-linear editing. In the beginning was film. News crews would shoot a hot item, only to wait several hours for the film to be developed in a laboratory, and then wait for the film to be printed. Film editing has been around for nearly a century, and although film is non-linear in how you can edit, then there are a lot of problems with how you deal with the material, keeping track of all the little pieces of film, all the little pieces of sound and also the fact that you're working with one physical cutting copy so if you make changes to something then the only way to get back to how you had it before is to actually physically unmake all the changes that you made. Ultimately it's frustrating, it's not very quick, you can't see the results of your work in a way that you can on a computerized system, you can't see what a dissolve is going to look like, you can't see what a basic optical is going to be, um, you, in fact sometimes on a Steambeck screen you can't see a whole hell of a lot of anything. Videotape promised to be an effective alternative to film. For television, it meant immediate access to source material, and editing was possible without any physical cutting. Tape has always had the advantage that you could have as many different versions of a program as you wanted because you were just copying from the masters to another tape. But you cannot change something, you cannot alter the running length of something. 26 seconds plus the uh, 12 seconds naturality so far. Videotape editing has one major drawback. It's a linear format. To make any alteration means starting again and rebuilding all the sequences. Editing on film is non-linear. It offers more possibilities without any loss of quality. The flexibility that you had with film of being able to try things out and see if it worked and try something else or put a few frames here back and a few frames there um, on something else. You, you really wouldn't, didn't have with tape, even when you had the computer uh, tape offline coming in, you know, you'd, you'd have to go back and rebuild things or, or go down another generation. This flexibility had a high price. Shooting on film was expensive. Editing on film was considered too slow. You haven't got six months to actually produce a documentary like you had in the film cutting room. You've got six days. The industry needed a non-linear editing system that had the flexibility of film and the access speed of tape. Computers had already released millions of people from the tiring inflexibility of the typewriter. The advances in digital technology meant that the storage of sound and moving images in computers became possible. And a new era in film and television began. I think there's been a non-linear explosion uh, in this country, or all, um, globally in the television world, um, because, simply because technology has become cheaper and cheaper, um, systems have proliferated, and it's proven to be probably the most effective way of editing most normal television programs and now films too. The system works by storing pictures and sound from the rushes as a digital code onto the hard disk. The breakthrough is that any shot or part of a shot can be played back instantly allowing the computer to jump or cut between any shots stored on the disk. Non-linear editing, hard disk based editing, gives you the non-linear advantages of film, the flexibility, but it takes care of all the material for you. It gives you the speed and immediacy of tape. And so it just offers far more creative possibilities for the editor and the director working. Non-linear technology means significant changes for both makers of documentaries and drama. When we first started using non-linear systems, we didn't really know what advantage they would give to us, but apart from the fact that we could see it would give us back the flexibility we used to have on film. The contenders wouldn't have been possible without non-linear, I don't think. 
Richard Dale was the producer on that. He, he's very clear about what he wants to see on the screen, and it's usually quite a challenge. The Contenders was um, quite an ambitious project for us. We wanted to do a five-part series in quite a uh, tight schedule. We had about eight months from beginning to end to make it. We tried very hard to be conscious to use whatever film format, whatever technique, was suited to the story. And we didn't want to be restricted by the technology of that. One of the things that editing on Lightworks made very easy for us with the contenders was mixing the film and video formats that we were doing and seeing immediately whether they were going to work next to each other. And by that I mean film formats, uh, Super 8, uh, Super 16, Standard 16, m and video formats from High 8 to Beta. Um, and in one particular sequence that, that, that we did, we mixed, I think, nearly all of them. And this was a sequence about a, a young 1,500-metre uh, runner called Matthew Yates, who'd gone to the Barcelona Olympics in 1992 and had a completely miserable time, lost his nerve just before the semi-final, locked himself in the toilet, been completely unable to compete. And we went to Barcelona, we took him back there to try and relive, if you like, the, this nightmare of, of this pre-Olympic performance for him. I remember walking into the darkness and the, and the musky cold of the concrete and the smell of the track underneath the stadium. We wanted to use a very kind of grainy, nightmare feel to the, the steady cam shots that we were filming in and around the stadium, which would just put you on edge a little. And we actually, at one point, also used the output of the Lightworks machine itself, the, the slightly degraded picture. Um, the, the Lightworks has compressed and, and then we took that out. And in fact we made it even more noisy and unpleasant before we used it. And this was to, to, to kind of just make things feel slightly edgy and ropey. So much of a film evolves and evolves during the editing process. You see something, you like it, you change it, you fiddle it around and then you change it around all together and go back to what you had at the beginning. Now, to do that in, in a linear system where, where nothing is flexible really would take forever for making the sort of typical documentary a non-linear route may provide many advantages but at the same time it does also have its drawbacks in that you can you can finish the first cut of a program in record time but i think still the whole thing about editing is that you still need to have thinking time you still need to have reaction time i mean we always say well let's sleep on it we'll see what it looks like on monday and I think that with nonlinear, the problem has been that people want to get the product out, they finish it, wrap it up and send it off and call, and call that the final product. And of course, a week later, you regret it. I think what it boils down to is that if you edit on a nonlinear system, you will, at one end of the scale, produce the program far more quickly than you would editing on tape. At the other end of the scale, you will spend exactly the same time editing on a non-linear system as you would on tape, but you will have a far better edited program. But after all, we should think he could be on time. Well, at least he made the gesture. He's still late. Calm your mother down, will you, for God's sake? It's not me that needs calming down, it's you. There he is, you see. We him. normally spend a couple of days uh, before the director comes on board editing all the exterior stuff, any location material which has been shot, and uh, then after the studio has finished, the director comes on and we edit the show together and make a, a first rough assembly. By the time I've shot a, shot a scene, I'm so familiar, one with the material and two with the shooting, that I lose critical judgment of what I've done. And it's very difficult to assess the value of what you've done. And what is really useful is for someone else to see it with a fresh eye, assemble the programme for you, and you to come back to it after a break, even if it's only two or three days, and your eyes refreshed, and you can make better value judgments of the quality of, of the material and the quality of what you've done, and, and make the appropriate decisions about change. When you were doing a linear edit, and you would look at things, um, and you'd make your changes, you'd then look at them again and say, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that, or, oh, I wish I could change that now, but it's too late because to make any changes after the event means making another copy. Take it from the car coming in. After all this from the car coming in. Yeah. I've just finished re-editing one episode and on the playback 
uh, we noticed a couple of things that weren't quite as we would like. There was a little camera move. And uh, if it was in, on a linear system, that would be almost impossible to correct. We'd just say, oh, well, let's hope it doesn't show too much. On this one, we went and had a look at another take, and, oh, that shot was fine. So we just slotted it in. It meant opening the program out a little bit because the shot was slightly longer. No problem. One of the, one of the particular points about EastEnders is that it's a long-running program. It runs for years and years and years. And directors like myself are visitors. We only come, we do three episodes here, we do three episodes there. So it's very difficult to take a long-term view or even have a long-term understanding of where storylines are leading to um, what's to happen to characters in the medium to long term. Uh, so occasionally when you're directing the program, you might do something which doesn't actually help the long term story. And so you have to accept that the producers are the people that actually have the long term view and some of the changes that they make are because of that. I think what's happened now is that with the advent of non-linear editing on EastEnders, the producer knows that um, they can ask for you to have a look at different takes, to, have, to try different performances, to perhaps swap the story order around and, and to take a look and see if it works, knowing that if it doesn't work, you can easily go back to where you were before at the press of one button and without any time having been wasted. So I think they're not under the same sort of compromise that they were before. The other thing, of course, is, is the duration of the programme. That's vitally important that it's, it's correct. We, we don't have very much leeway on that. So any changes we're making, we're always having to check how the duration of the programme is going um, because it mustn't be too short, it mustn't be too long. And at any stage, you can just pop to the end of the programme, see how long the program is and if we've suddenly cut too much out you can go back and reinstate some material that you've cut out in order to make the program the correct length.